I am in the Governor Knoll State Forest, just off the St. Croix campground within the State Forest. And I'm going to check out the Wood River Interpretive Trail. All I know so far, there's a lot of stairs. Well, that was a bust. I did not like that trail. So, we are in the St. Croix National Scenic Riverway. Actually, this is part of the National Park Service. Okay. Um, I'm going to try the Sand Rock Cliffs Trail. I am starting from 70 um, Landing. That's what they call it. Uh, parking area, bathrooms, and a boat ramp and trail access. Off we go for an evening stroll. So that parking area was really just across the highway from the entrance to the campground. So it's pretty convenient, easy hop over. There are a lot of other trails up and down the river. This is just the first one I'm trying because it's close to the campground and it's later in the afternoon. And after this, I'll probably just bed down for the night and see what I hit tomorrow morning. Uh, there are two campgrounds, uh, two larger campgrounds in the uh, state forest here. One is the family campground I'm in, is a mix of electric and non-electric sites. The other one is an equestrian campground. So I'm not sure where that is and I'll probably skip that one because so far, no one has ever commented on any of the equestrian campgrounds that I've shown. It's a shame. I don't know if anybody's showing the equestrian campgrounds or they just know about them. So, I'll just show you the family campground. As lovely a hike as this is, the flies are driving me nuts. So I've turned around, heading back. I'm gonna try to find a closer parking area. Because right now I am going batty. You know, the hat is less for sun protection and more to keep the flies off my head. Because the thing I hate more is something landing on my head. All right, this. Sand Rock Cliff Campground. Don't trust Google to tell you how to get here. They tried to take me through a mine, a pit mine, to get here. Trust the National Park Service signs on the roads. Although there's no final sign at the end. There are signs along the way and I just went to the end of the road. So we'll see what I find. So a designated campsite means a place with a fire ring and a table. And uh, carry in and carry out. There's several walk-in sites tucked away back in here. They're not numbered. There is a restroom down at the bottom of the stairs. Nothing up here. Pines are singing to me. And the wind. Looking down on a side route to the river. That's pretty dry down there, so that's not the main channel. These are sandstone cliffs, soft rock.
see a staircase down there. Let's see where this takes us. There's access down to the river. Which means you have access the other way around too. So you could paddle here on the river. You leave your canoe or kayak down here and walk up to the campsites. So there's your sign. If you're paddling down the St. Croix, which mainly goes that way, there's a side channel here. That'll bring you to this campground. Water's a little low right now. Let's get down there. Well, if you paddle in here, I don't think you have to worry about your boat disappearing because it's not going to wash downstream. So this is the parking area. It's at the end of a gravel road. Down here to the right of the non-sign that somebody shot up is the water. Over here are the restrooms and then the stairs up to the campsites. So that's called Sand Rock, Sand Rock Cliff Camping or Campground. Now, I don't know who owns it. Is that part of the state national forest or is it or state forest or is it part of the National Park Service? The signs coming up here were from the National Park Service and it's on the state park or state forest map. So either way, it's available for use. I think there's no fee to stay there. Headed north a bit more to a spot marked on the map called Paint Mine. Paint Mine area. There you go. Let's go see. Some work went into this road. It's kind of rustic now, but there's a whole stone wall all along it. Some old history I'm stumbling on. There's a pipe that runs under the road. Starts over there. And the work goes off to. There's a creek bed running over there in the ravine. Interesting. So that wall that comes follows along. This point is a staircase. So I just walked all the way down. Apparently there used to be a staircase down to here. I'll check that on the way back. Oh, this is even more interesting. I have end-grained wood pavers. These are wood pavers. So there's a two track here of ingrained wood. Lovely little creek running by. This is pretty. path I've got a tie railroad ties on either side there's the creek again at the bottom of the hill at the river it's like a pair of campsites Site. This looks like a nice spot on the river to camp.
This would be your secluded restroom for the campsite. Tell you, this is just so unique. See wooden pavers. I don't know how old they are, but they're still here. That's pretty amazing. Okay, when you see the wooden pavers, look for the trail off to the side. And there's the remnants of the mine. There's that pipe that I saw further. There's wood up there and coloring here in the water indicates that there's some sort of rusty stuff that is used. And look, there's even a water wheel hiding under this fairly newly fallen tree. So I found the mine. Most of the water is coming out right there out of the pipe, but it's broken. Some more logs or boards put in for some sort of sluicing here. Collecting. Collect the pigment. It's amazing that so much of this is still here. Well, that was definitely worth the stop. Um, Take a look at a campsite on the river that you can, uh, if you're paddling and camping, you can use. If you're there, wander up and take a look at the uh, old mine. It's amazing how much stuff is still in the woods. And the last date on here is 1913. To see some of that stuff in that good a condition at this point, someone must have been using it after that. I, I can't believe the end grain pavers in a road in the woods that are still there over a hundred years after that date. Okay, so according to my official Governor Knoll State Forest Visitor Guide, if you come down to the town right on 70 of Grantsburg and go to Memory Lake Campground, one dollar showers just drop your dollar into the slot over here and up to 15 minutes nobody's there to restrict it but that should be long enough took a minute to get the hot water there but once it was there it was hot so one dollar showers in the area no coins needed all right let's go take a look around the saint croix saint croix campground um it's not directly on the river, it's close to the river. The layout is a little different than I've seen before. Um, we do have a trail coming in and out of the campground. Uh, that's the outside of the loop. The inside doesn't have a lot of spaces. There are more on the outside. And I'll show you what these folks did. Check out their hammock stack. And yes, I did see them in all three of those yesterday. So most of the sites are on the outside. There are a few on the inside, but the inside has, in the inner loop, there are two pods of, of um, pit toilets with little, ba little paths leading in from like five or six different directions to each one of them. So there's not a lot of sites on the inside. These sites here are really very big. There's a lot of space between. I mean, that is way back there. I mean, when you're a truck camper or something like I have, it just feels like way too much space. But if you bring an RV here, you'll fit in easily. I'm just gonna walk, show you a few more of them. Um, there are electric sites scattered 
around. It's kind of hard to determine. They're not marked on the signs. You just gotta, I know it listed on the website, but it's kind of hard to figure out where they are because they don't say E on them. So I can't just drive and say, hey, that's an electric side. I'd have to find the ones with the poles. Look at the size of that. Ton of room here. Now, your limitation is it would be the trees up top. So kind of like my vehicle here with a huge amount of space around it. They got Starlink. Just massive sites. I mean, this is the first one I've actually been able to tell where the pad is way over here. The rest of them, you really can't tell where they think it's supposed to be. This is one of those paths that goes into a pit toilet. Just remember when you go into the pit toilet, remember which path you came down. It could get a little confusing and you come out in the wrong part of the park. But you can see this travel trailer, fifth wheeler in here. And they still have another 15 feet behind them or more. And everything fit in just fine. Hiding back here, we have a classic GM, DMC, and this is an electric site, so they're plugged in. But there's room for like four more in there. <laughs> Got room for four vehicles up front, and there's still room behind them and off to the side. There is a camp post hiding over here, so there is firewood available in the loop. Another thing to mention is all these sites are incredibly level. I mean, so I'm coming down a hill to this site. It's a pretty flat site. 103, well, it's big enough. It's not the biggest. That won't fit the big rigs. 104. Now these are the 100 loop. The 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 loop, the lower lumbered, numbered loop, is the equestrian campground. This one you slope in, but then there's still plenty of level space. And this one slope up to the level space with that classic camper in there. The 108 slopes up quite a bit. That one may not be the flattest one. But once you get up there, you'll find a flat spot. So there's a flat parking and another spot up top for tents. 109 slopes down. But again, you have a flat section. Now 110 and 111 are, I think, the best if you have a group that wants to share space. So there's a row of tents and things. So it's kind of a pull through the whole thing. So that's the one spot where you can get more than two vehicles officially. You can get up to four vehicles in that grouping. Otherwise, they're all pretty isolated and you wouldn't be like hanging with your friends in a neighboring site. And there it is, way back there. So these last couple have been electric sites. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 are all electric. I'm in 120 and it is not. Can't even see it. That's 118. So even after the trailer's parked and the vehicle's parked across, there's still room up here for a couple more vehicles or a trailer with a boat, which I'm surprised I haven't seen. I've only seen one boat trailer here. Well, that's my tour of Governor Knowles State Forest um, and the St. Croix campground tour, as well as a few other campsites that I stumbled along the way. The state forest is mostly along the river. It kind of up and down the uh, St. Croix River for quite a ways. But as soon as you get off the river, it's all private lands. 
So there's not a lot of hiking other than right on the river. Uh, there are equestrian trails. There is a, another large wildlife area near the town that I visited last night. I can't remember the name of the town right now. Sorry, folks. Um, but you have a great shower in that city park. So it's a great place for um, paddling um, and paddling camping. It is also the waterway itself, I think, is protected by the National Park Service or in, in that realm as well, because the signage has been a bit mixed between Wisconsin and federal. So I'm not quite sure who owns what, but either way, we own it because we're the taxpayers and it's our land. So get out there and use that land. Uh, get out and explore it. If you know more about this place, please leave a comment down below. I just kind of stumbling my way around, found a few things. I really kind of like the um, paint mine. That was kind of neat to find. Um, and it's, I think there's still some more to explore there that I didn't get into. Um, if I wanted to get my feet wet, probably even more. So thanks for coming along on this journey. If there's other parks that I haven't visited, please let me know. I'm trying to get to all the Wisconsin state parks. I know there are some wildlife areas that I may have missed. I'm really trying to focus on places that are more than just day use spaces. I have hit quite a few of those as well over time, but the campground tours are what I've been trying to focus on. And I think I'm running out of campground tours in Wisconsin state park or natural area system or in the forest as in this case. So let me know in the comments down below if you think there's more I need to visit. Please subscribe to the channel and you can see more campgrounds like this. You'll see what I get to in the future beyond Wisconsin. Obviously, like I said, I'm running out here. You can go back, see all my past videos, check the playlists. I'll have it up here at the end here of Wisconsin State Park campgrounds. Thanks for coming along on the journey. Um, I hope you get something out of it and get on out there.